punch. That's what Canadians received from this Prime Minister. He promised them low interest rates for long. He said debt was without consequence and that the budget would balance itself. None of those things came true, and interest rates are now 19 times higher than they were a year ago. The Governor of the Bank of Canada, the former Liberal Finance Minister, countless other experts agree that the Prime Minister's deficits are ballooning inflation and therefore interest rates. Families have to plan their finances, so will he indicate how much will the average family see their monthly mortgage payments go up over the next three years? How much? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Oh, man. Mr. Speaker, while the Bank of Canada like continues grand. to do its job to drive down inflation, which is going down, we will continue to do our job to be there to support Canadians, Canadians who need it with investments in things like dental care, in a grocery rebate, in supports for low-income renters, and the kinds of things that Conservatives would be cutting instead. Canadians are hurting, and the Conservatives' answer is cuts to programs, cuts to supports for families, cuts to Canadians at a time they need it. Uh, austerity is not the answer, Mr. Speaker. Responsible fiscal approach is. That's exactly what we're doing by supporting Canadians who need it. Here, here. Leader of the Opposition. Actually, austerity is what, exactly what Canadians are feeling in their household budgets right. today, while the government budgets overflow with abundance. Mr. Speaker, there's already been a 16 per cent year-over-year increase in the number of Canadians missing their mortgage payments. After yep. eight years of this Prime Minister, we have the highest house, household debt in the entire G7. Household debt is now 7% higher than our entire GDP, Mr. Speaker. And now his inflationary deficits are shooting up interest rates. So how much will the average family have to plan to pay more in mortgage payments per month? Uh -huh. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Straight, Mr. Speaker. Canada has the best debt to GDP ratio in the G7. We have the lowest deficit. Triple A cre credit rating. But the leader blah, of the blah, opposition blah, blah, blah. wants us to do far less to support Canadians who need it right now. That's exactly backwards, Mr. Speaker. Here, his pursuit of ideological gains uh, is uh, hurting Canadians. We are going to continue to be there in responsible, targeted ways, keeping our fiscal responsibility at the center of what we do <laughs> while we support Canadians in targeted non-inflationary... He actually thinks he's doing a better Canadians job than what Pierre right could. Here, here. The leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, it's not just me anymore pointing out that deficits drive... It's inflation. Mr. Sunshine Baby. It's liberals. It's the oh. former liberal finance minister, John Manley, who said that the liberal deficits are a bit like driving your car with one foot on the gas and the other on the brake generally, especially if there's slushy conditions under your tires, end quote. He's pointing out that this Prime Minister presses his foot on the inflationary gas pedal while the Bank of Canada has to press on the brakes. The, the, the engine is eventually going to blow. We know Canadians cannot pay their bills. Will the Prime Minister be honest today and tell Canadians how much their mortgage payments will go up because of these rate hikes? The only thing blowing is Jagmeet to Trudeau. Let's use a specific example of what Ms. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition calls uh, inflationary spending. We made a decision that kids under 12 in this country shouldn't have to pay for dental care. Their families should be able to send them to the dentists. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, the Conservative politicians, who all have access to dental care uh, through the House of Commons supports uh, for their kids, don't think Canadians who can't afford to send their kids to the dentist should be doing that, and they say that's inflationary. Mr. Speaker, that approach around cuts and austerity is not what Canadians need. Speaker, we don't need another drama performance. Because oh! at, the end, at the end of the day, when theatrics collides with mathematics, the math always wins. And after eight years of this Prime Minister, the Canadians have a, a, a stock of combined debt that is bigger than our entire GDP. In fact, we are the most Holy indebted shit. families of any country in the G7. The IMF says that Canada is the number one at-risk country for mass mortgage defaults. Will he reverse his inflationary and high interest rate policies before people go broke? Here. Here. Prime Minister. 
after I've, I've answered this question a few times, but the leader of the opposition continues to ask it because he refuses to go outside and see what is actually happening in Canada. Forest fires are raging. It's the worst year on record for forest fires already, but the fact is they are going to get worse in the coming years because climate change is real, and yet the Conservative Party continues to stand against the climate action that we've been taking, stand against the investments that we're making to support families, to support first responders. They continue to stand against help for Canadians who are losing their homes, losing their families, uh, lo losing their livelihoods. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Have a heart attack. Has he really sunk into the low of exploiting these fires for political gain to distract from his inflationary and high interest rate yeah. policies? Yeah. It's come to that he's Disgusting. so ashamed of his economic policy and record. I'm going to have to interrupt this. Say to his I'm face. I'm getting noise from both sides. Finally. I know you can handle it. Uh, you do that well. But I, what, I, what I need to have is I want to hear what's being said. And I'm sure both sides want to hear what's being said. I'm going to ask him to start from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister has just lowered himself to the worst steps to try and distract from his disastrous economic record, he's now using the forest fires to change the channel. This is even lower yep. than I would have expected for yep. him. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are going to sit down tonight to discuss how they're going to move into a small apartment because they're going to have to give up their homes after his inflationary policies have driven up interest rates on Canadian mortgage holders who have record debt. Will the Prime Minister keep the promise he made six months ago to balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates before folks go broke. Yes. Yeah. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I've answered that question a dozen times. And for the Leader of the Opposition to consider uh, that the forest fires that are taking people from their communities and destroying their homes are a mere distraction and not top of mind for people from coast to coast to coast is shameful. But the fact of the matter is he doesn't have anything to say about that because he refuses to put forward any real plan to fight against climate change, and he does nothing but fight against our plan to fight climate change. If he has a better plan, let him say it, because we've been waiting a long time for it. But he has no plan oh my to fight climate God, change. God, going to explode. Yes, while Canada is burning. Holy crap, I've never seen him get that upset. The Honourable Member for Madawaska Restigouche. Hoy. Order. This is getting tense. So, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has caused the mortgage crisis we now face. Back in 2021, 2022, he flooded the economy with cheap, uh, mm -hmm. excessive cash. That went into the mortgage system. It bid up the price of housing. House prices had doubled under his leadership. Then Canadians were forced to take on massive, in some case, million-dollar mortgages in order to buy a home. He promised them rates would be long, low for long, but then his deficits juiced inflation, which pushed up interest rates. And now, over the next three years, many of those same families will face 40 percent increases in their mortgage payments. How is he going to save their homes now that he put them in peril? Here. Right Honourable Prime Minister. 2021, 2022. What was happening around then? What was happening in 2020, 2021? Uh, the investments we made. Oh my God, this is getting so good. The pandemic. The investments we made to support small businesses, uh, to support our frontline health workers, to ensure that we got through this extraordinarily difficult time uh, in one of the best situations with some of the fewest deaths of all of our peer countries. And the Conservative Party continues to say they would have done far different. They would have allowed people to be more vulnerable. They wouldn't have been there to support Canadians. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. 
2021, 2022, I'll tell you what was happening. I'll tell you what he was doing. He was trying to stuff a half billion dollars into the WE charity to help a group that had paid off his family. We, we know that he gave money to Frank Bayless's company. We know that 40% of all the deficits he had oh my God, Pierre. to do with COVID, according to the PBO. We know he added 100 billion of debt before COVID ever happened. And now he's adding hundreds of billions more now that COVID is done. So he's got to stop using the COVID excuse and start answering the question. People don't know how they're going to pay their mortgages. That's why I've had uh -huh. many times about that question. Will he finally answer it? How will they pay their mortgages? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, Pierre. Mr. Speaker, over the past years, we've been investing in Canadians in targeted, non-inflationary ways. It's the most bullshit non-answer. GST credit uh, with uh, dental uh, dental supports for uh, for families under 12, uh, with investments that have cut child care fees in half, Mr. Speaker. These are all things that the Conservative government party stands against and indeed says they would cut. And I ask you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and them through, uh, how would cutting programs for Canadians help them in this difficult time? 